Yay. All right, and we are live on the Gamification Revolution. Hello, hello, everybody. I'm your host, Gabe Zifferman, and I'm coming to you from a bright and sunny, cool and crisp, uh, now end of winter day in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and nice to see you all just before Labor Day. And today I have as guests uh, Thomas Shu and Steve Cockinen from hello. Accenture. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, Gabe. Thanks for having us. And you guys, everybody else who's here with us right now, all of you who are here on chat, all of you who are watching us live, welcome. It's so good to see you, Mike and David and Beth. Oh my God, amazing. So, so, so good to see you. And for those of you who are here for the first time, you'll need to log in using one of your social media credentials to Spreecast, which is the platform that we're on. Use one of your social media credentials, log in, and then you can ask us questions. There's actually a queue of questions that you can submit and ask of Thomas and Steve and I, and we'll answer your questions, and potentially we'll even be able to bring you on camera if you have a camera. So you can do all of that once you log in. And for those of you who are uh, watching us in non-real time or listening to us asynchronously or on the podcast or whatever, thanks for tuning in. It's great to have you all here on Gamification Revolution. And if you don't know, you guys, this fall, I'm doing a series of workshops. You can check out those workshops uh, in New York, San Francisco, Los Angeles. It's at gsummit.com. Um, check out the workshops that are there. Take a course with me. It's so amazing. You can learn about gamification and have a good time. Um, and otherwise, hopefully you're working on all of your really cool projects through the summer. So Thomas and Steve, welcome. So glad to have you. Tell us about the your work at Accenture. Thomas, why don't you kick it off? Tell us a little bit about what you've been working on there for folks that haven't had a chance to see you at, sure. at uh, G Summit yet. Yep. So Steve and I work in an area of Accenture that's focused on enterprise social collaboration. So how can we make our employees more effective through social collaboration? And probably our biggest challenge in all that is changing behavior and motivating people to change their behavior from using the old ways of collaborating we're starting to use some of the newer tools in social media and the social capabilities that we've built at Accenture. So we've actually been using gamification techniques for a long time now, since 2007. But just recent, recently, last uh, December of last year, we launched a new program, sort of a um, revamped or step change in our gamification program, really leveraging a lot of the new uh, findings from motivation psychology, and thinking about you know, how do you really design a system to be engaging and motivating. Uh, so we launched that in December of last year, and the results have been really tremendous. And I think surprising even to see. Tell us that. about them. Yeah, so. Yeah, tell, tell us about some of those results. Yeah, so in terms of results, uh, there's a couple things we did. We measured sort of key target behavior. And we looked at from when we launched the program. Uh, and we looked, you know, for each quarter, after we launched the program. And you know, typically three months is not really enough to tell if it's successful because you know there could be a spike and then it could drop back down. But we looked at six months as a minimum of, you know, after six months, what did it look like? And we saw across the board really with all our key behaviors, you know, in most cases triple digit percentage increases in targeted behavior. We also saw um, significant penetration. So since we launched the program, I think it's something like 40,000 more people, 40,000 more people are engaged in collaboration at Accenture in some form than they were before. Wow. We also did a survey asking people, you know, trying to understand how well do they understand collaboration? Are they aware of our tools? Um, are they motivated to collaborate? And are they um, being recognized for? Do they feel they're being recognized for? And on average, before the numbers were in on average about mid-50s. Uh, now six months and, and more after the program, that's increased by about 20% to the mid-70s. And on top of all these kind of these quantitative measures, we've also seen you know tons of success stories come in about people saying, you know, I was new to this collaboration thing, you know, this new program that you guys uh, put into place kind of drew me in. But now I'm starting to realize the intrinsic benefits of collaboration. And we've had, you know, I think it's like 100 different business un units within Accenture are requesting A3 scores for their people. That's the name of the program, A3, by the way. Requesting, you know, how well are people collaborating because they want to recognize their individuals on top of what is a central perspective. So I know that was a So lot part of the idea. 
so part of the idea is that you figured out a way to measure how right. people are collaborating. Steve, can you yeah. can you tell us a little bit about so that idea? So within Accenture, we have what we refer to as our collaboration mindset, and we look at it along three lines, and we refer to them as the three C's of collaboration. So how they connect to the content and people they need to do their job. It's about contributing their own knowledge and insights, and it's also be about being a champion of collaboration. And so what we did is we took a look out in our system to figure out what activities can we track back to each of those three behaviors. So we have about between 60 to 70 different activities that track back to those three uh, behaviors around connect, contribute, and champion. And that's how we go about calculating the score. Now, some activities uh, are, are, are weighted as fewer points than other activities. So if you simply like something out on our stream, which is kind of our internal kind of news feed, if you will, um, that might just be worth a single point. Um, but if you blog, that's, that's worth more points. But ideally what we want people to do is not just simply be the doer themselves, but how much are they inspiring others to interact with the content that they put out there? And that's really how you kind of really level up within, within our quote unquote game uh, within our A3 program is really getting other people to interact with the content that you put out there. So it's not just me liking things, posting things, commenting on things myself, but how much are other people interacting with that? But again, it is really around the connect, contribute, and champion behaviors. So is this one of those, I mean, this is one of those topics, it's super interesting, right? It's one of those topics, and I'm sort of curious in your thoughts about this, Thomas. It's one of those topics where people might easily say, um, that's very invasive. Like what you just described is like, you're trying to push me and structure something that should be just free flowing, you know, uh, a natural part of the way that we interact. And aren't you now like digging in really deeply to try to like analyze every micro thing that a person does inside the organization? And how, how do you respond to that? Or ha have you even heard any of that feedback from people? I think we've heard some of it, but frankly, it's been a little bit more in the minority. Some people will say, well, people should just be collaborating, right? They don't, we shouldn't have to have to create this program to get people to do what they should be doing. But in reality, people know what they should do but they don't always do it, right? And that's where that this motivational aspect comes in to say, okay, we, we've always known what people have, been, have done, but now we're giving that visibility, that feedback back to the user or back to the player. And we've heard a lot more stories of people saying, you know, I, I didn't really know how to collaborate. I wasn't really into this, but I, I just started doing it initially kind of because it was fun and because there are these points and these badges you can earn. But eventually I started to realize, hey, I'm connecting to other people. I'm getting answers to questions that help me do my work you know, better and faster. And now like, I kind of collaborate because I, I realize there's intrinsic benefits and it's not so much about, you know, oh, someone's looking over my shoulder. And it's, kinda, it's just more of a nice like, uh, motivational aspect on top of it to get people, to draw people in, start to get them. And, and to add to that too is, right. And, and, and to add that to that too is, you know, right. social collaboration is meant to be social in and of itself. So, the fact that I'm liking something or commenting on something, that's already being exposed to the masses anyway. Now the score itself, so we have the score that we calculate each quarter for every employee here at Accenture. Um, that's only the, of, of us, can only be used as an encouragement. It can't be used as an embarrassment. So like our leaderboards, we're okay to be able to show leaderboards over people, but as far as my individual score, only myself or my career counselor is able to see uh, so that'd be someone who here at Accenture I, I report might report up to or advises me on my career. So it's not like we uh, open up everybody's scores to everybody at Accenture. But the ironic thing too is we do reset scores every quarter. So come uh, September 1st year when when we actually turn our fiscal year here at Accenture, everybody's scores does get re re reset back to zero because it is something we want people to continue to do on an ongoing basis. Do you, so do you, did you establish a baseline for the collaborative behavior before you actually did the exercise? And what do you, what are some of the other kind of metrics that have played into this since you've actually gone out to develop your own collaboration metric? And I'll just throw in one more question for you because I'm really interested in the metric. Did you base this collaboration score, this metric on other kind of empirical research? Like did you go and look at other ways to measure collaboration or did you kind of construct something unique here? So tell, tell me a little bit more about that, the metric side. Yeah. So there's a couple of questions in there. What was the first question again? 
Well, so my first, my, let's start with the first question, which is, how did you develop this metric? This, you, we discussed the pieces of it. Did you base this on some other, uh, some other research, or did you do kind of an internal? So it started, internal yeah, it started out really small, and this goes back to 2006, 2007, when I first started up this program, which is a very sim simplistic program where we ran some metrics, metrics on the back end. We actually just started out with seven metrics, and it was really focused on people contributing content into our knowledge repository. So we started there pretty small and then over the years have continued to evolve it and add in different elements. Now, as Thomas and I were, were, were working on the current version design of the game, we actually tapped into a lot of metrics to really figure out what are those right point thresholds? What's the value of this thing? What, you know, what do we want the average person to be able to do? So we really tapped into a lot of our existing metrics that we had available at our fingertips to really design this game to figure out, okay, is this a game that helps delineate between the different uh, levels of, of, of an employee as when it comes to collaboration? Or is this a game that no one's going to ever win at because we made it so impossible? So we have tapped into a lot of metrics to really design our current game, but it did start out as a very simplistic seven metrics. It was around, I think, like how many documents have you uploaded? How many downloads have those generated? And a few other metrics. But now we kind of have expanded it over the past seven or eight, eight years. So what about kind of the baseline and some of the kind of uh, uh, qualitative side of things, Thomas? Did you guys establish a kind of baseline for collaboration beforehand? Was there any research internally about how people were collaborating or how they weren't? How did you kind of structure that part of your work? Yeah, I mean, we did a, we did some a number of studies internally to look at. Well, <clears throat> like we did one study called the Social Collaboration Impact Study, where we looked at what's the correlation between collaboration and high performance. We found that our high performers were more collaborative, right? They did things like they updated their people profile more often. They reached out to others using you know, the social network and other means. Um, so we kind of looked at a, a couple different things, and we did do. I think the advantage we had with this program is that we had like you know years worth of baseline data to say, okay, here's the level of collaboration that we have today, right? And here's and, and that allowed us to get the game balance really right. You know, a lot of people who start up this program don't always have that luxury. But we had a ton of data that we could look at and say, okay, well, what's the current level of collaboration? You know, we could slice it by workforce or geography or level, um, a ton of different ways. And we can look at that and say, okay, well, how do we design this game with the right level of balance? What are the right kind of thresholds to that? So we kind of we took that and we felt like at that point, um, you know, we were in decent shape, but there's certainly a lot of room to improve, and I think that's where this program helped with that step change that we were looking for, right? It's been kind of this organic, gradual growth as we roll out uh, different capabilities, as we try and build awareness, uh, but, you know, adding this layer on top of it really kind of made that step change to the next level for us. So, so we have a couple of um, questions about the tactical execution of the program that I want to get to from, from the viewers. But before we do that, um, can you just give me a little insight into the context before you started this? So, so was this like, um, like management inside Accenture said, hey, we have a collaboration problem and we don't know how to fix it. And you guys came along and said gamification. Or were you guys going around? Can you, Steve, can you give us a little sense of what, what life was like before you launched this program? I missed the latter part of your question. I think you were asking about, you know, what was kind of the yeah. impetus to get us to go down this path. Yeah, maybe um, and I think it, we're having a little bit of a lag there. Maybe, Thomas, you want to take this question. What was, what was life like before you launched the program there at Accenture? Um, okay. Well, I think you, I also missed the last part of the question. But basically, you know, this was something that uh, we're part of the, the team that looks after the social collaboration application team. And this was something that we, we were always looking for ways to increase engagement, increase motivation. We had tried a, a number of different things, you know, communication, sponsorship, uh, trying to tie this into performance management, so how people are rated uh, and, you know, how well they collaborate impacts their ratings and their promotions and things of that nature. Um, and we felt like, kind of within our own team, we saw, hey, this, this gamification thing looks like it has a lot of promise. A lot of the concepts make a lot of sense. 
you know, let's try this out as a way to kind of juice the program and see if we can get to that next level of engagement. It was kind of an idea that started internally within within our team. We launched it to all the centers. So to the question about South Africa, this is a global program, so it goes out to um, all 300,000 of our people in every country. I think we're in like 60, 70 countries. Um, and so we rolled it out, and from there it started to kind of go viral, so to speak, right? Different business units, uh, leadership and other business units started to see this and be like, hey, this is awesome. We want to recognize you know, our, high, you know, our high performance collaborators as well. So it, it kind of started within our team, and I think the, the success has allowed it to be sustained and gotten other folks at Accenture. And something to add that to, too, what Thomas was saying was, it is one component to our overall change program for social collaboration at Accenture. So I wouldn't say gamification by itself is a silver bullet, but there are lots of other things that we could couple it with that really take the power of this and put it to a whole nother level. Again, I think there'd be a lot of excitement just by gamification in and of itself within this space, but as we couple it together, as TJ was saying, with, with performance management, with leadership, with sponsorship, with marketing and communications, with other initiatives we have going on to get people to collaborate and share, um, that's what that, that's what I think has really brought a lot of power to this program uh, within Accenture. That's really kind of kept it, you know, in every every conversation you have around gamification, you know, the Gartner stat around how many, what percent of, of gamification initiatives, initiatives will fail because of poor design. Well, I think the design that we have here and how we've coupled it with other things will continue to make this uh, an ongoing um, program for Accenture, not just a, a flash in the pan. Were there any interesting kind of failures in it? Like we've only been talking about the successes, but were there some things that you felt like, ah, you kind of missed the mark yeah, on I mean, to go back and redo? I go back to, I mean, some of the initial effort that we put in to design this, and we had three false starts in trying to automate this process. So I used to sit back on the back end and pull a lot of reports on the back end. And we had three false starts, uh, a couple of internally and one externally where it just did quite click quite properly. Uh, but more recently, we were able to find a vendor in the marketplace that allowed us to be able to make the step change uh, and be confident in that type of solution that it is adding the value that we wanted it to. And in, in, in my perspective, even if I go back, you know, three or four years, you know, it definitely goes beyond what I had expected to be able to do within this program. So it's, it's taken you like four Seven years? Seven or eight years for me. Well, but, my gosh, it's, it's something we've been thinking about and doing in various forms for seven or eight years. And we had started to think about gamification and how we could take it to the next level for a number of years. But it, I think it took a while for us to find the right technology to be able to do it. Right. We're like, OK, we've got this great idea. We've got this vision for what we want to do. And, you know, we, we started with one technology and it didn't quite work. And then we tried another one, didn't quite work. And then eventually we landed on one that could meet the need, and they're successful. So there's a lot of kind of waiting around for us. Um, not that, and maybe if we had kind of thought about this a couple years later, the journey wouldn't have been as long, right? Right, I see. Yeah, you were kind of early adopter. So it's a question from uh, Maria. Thanks, Maria, for the question, and, and nice to see you. I think it's your first question here, so great to, great to have you. And uh, the question from Maria is about systems and support, and we also had a question from Mike Finney about the team. So tell us a little bit about the uh, technology stack and what it's taken, what it takes now to do it, and also the team stack. So how many resources does it take to make this happen? And uh, what kind of stuff are you doing behind the curtain that's not obvious to folks? I'll, I'll take the technology question, and maybe I'll let Steve take the, the team question. Uh, from a technology perspective, we have, I think it's, I, I can't remember the number, like seven different social collaboration systems. We've got um, kind of SharePoint for document repository. We've got um, a custom-built sort of people profile or social profile capability, uh, a custom-built activity stream. Um, we use uh, a video sharing platform. We use uh, a blogging platform, uh, WordPress, a number of different technologies. And so what we had to do was basically integrate the gamification platform with all these different systems, right? Build what we call listeners into each of these systems that detect when people do something, send a message over to the platform, get the response back, and then render kind of the progress 
back to the player. So, and then another thing we actually had to do, um, Accenture is very, uh, very careful about data privacy and data security. So with cloud vendors, there were some concerns about, you know, well, what kind of information are you sending uh, over to this platform? So we ended up having to build almost this middleware, this middle layer that handled a lot of the security and the exchanging with the platform so that we would be able to keep all of our sort of sensitive or demographic information secure. So there was some work around the integration piece and then kind of building this middle uh, service layer as well. So, so did you guys actually have to build that sort of Accenture custom middleware to speak between the two kind of solutions? I mean, it sounds like a really, really uh, heterogeneous environment that you have to build this in. Yeah, and that's one of the things, that's one of the reasons why we also built this middle layer ourselves is because um, the collaboration program was is really the first and the, more, the kind of the premier customer of this gamification service, but the idea is that we want a truly enterprise solution. Now, other business units can have their own motivation programs that are perhaps designed to motivate the right travel behavior, right? So booking your flights in advance or choosing the lower cost hotel. Got it. They can do their own program, you know, CIO security behaviors, they can do different programs and they can all kind of talk to this middle, middle layer uh, in an easy way. What about the team, Steve? What does, how many people does it take? What kind of resources does it take yeah. to make well, this Well, the, the initial development effort quickly. was uh, surprisingly quick, at least for, for Accenture. We actually took more time in the contracting process, just because Accenture does things with a lot of T's and I's to dot and cross. Um, so the, the actual implementation effort took about three months of, of effort and time. Uh, we had myself and TJ leading kind of the design element on, on our side, and we were spending anywhere between 30 to 40 to 50 percent of our time focused on designing the game, uh, making sure that things were being installed properly. On the technical side, again, because the middle layer was something that may, other companies may not have to do, we spent a lot of time, I think, uh, you know, upwards of right around $800 of development time to develop something like that. Uh, but for listeners and other things like that, the effort was much smaller. So we probably had about, you know, four or five developers focus on helping us get this up, getting this up initially. Um, you know, on an ongoing basis, now obviously that's, that's shrunk down. Um, TJ and I have, uh, actually not, probably not too far from you, Gabe, right now, we have a, a team in Buenos Aires uh, who helps us uh, manage this game going forward. So you have a couple of resources down there that uh, on a part-time basis manage the, you know, up, up, upgrading. So each, this quarter we're, we're, we're transitioning to a new, a little bit of a new design in some of our elements. And so they're in the process of updating the, uh, the, the console. Um, and then on the back end, you know, from a developer perspective, we still have, uh, you know, probably a developer or so worth of FTE time where each quarter or we run into an issue that needs to be addressed that they'll look into. So it definitely had, has has fallen off as far as the, the, the amount of time and focus and effort. But at the same time, it's not something that you can just kind of drop, let go and, and be done with it. You always want to continue to refresh and refocus on what, what you're trying to do and accomplish with your program. How, how far off were you, um, if you had to guess, from how difficult you thought it was going to be to implement this kind of thing technically and how difficult it actually was? Good question. Um, it, it, in one hand, I, I thought it would be difficult because with, with Accenture being such a large organization, 300,000 employees, we break a lot of things. When we, when we go out into the marketplace and, and select a vendor, it's very easy for our size and scale to break stuff. So kind of going in, we, we were kind of uh, cautiously optimistic that this might work, but knowing that fact that, you know, we, we do break stuff, you know, break large, large things. Um, so it's not necessarily the mom and pop shops. We break, you know, big stuff from say Microsoft and, uh, and other vendors. Um, so, but at the same time, I mean, the fact that we got it done in three months was very much a shock to me. I, I couldn't believe we got it done that quickly. Now there were technical challenges. Uh, we tried to keep things a lot of out of the box functionality for our first release. I think that helped minimize some of our issues. Uh, but then when we when we launched on, I think it was December 17th, I think it was a Friday night that we launched. And I sat there like right around midnight when we were supposed to be turning the switch to turn this thing on. And there were definitely a lot of, of, of bugs that we had. And partly that's due, I think, to the agile development effort that we did for this, where it's just go out there, crank things out. So, so for instead, instead of doing what used to 
be our approach with an extension where you do a year long release. Everything takes so long to get anything done. And by the time you get it done, you know, everything else is fresh and new. We actually did, the, did an agile approach, which I think caused us a few more hiccups than we would have preferred uh, come launch day. What about um, turning this into an external product or service, uh, Thomas or TJ? Are there any plans to uh, bring this to the rest of the world or bring this outside of Accenture? Because it, it sounds like you've built an internal competence and system. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we have a gamification practice that works with our, our clients to bring gamification solutions, you know, working with any vendor for uh, various use cases that we've identified. But this collaboration program is definitely something that gets our clients excited. Every time we show it to clients, you know, they get really excited about it. And we've had some clients say, you know, I, I want that or I want a version of that. Right? I think the program we put together is quite comprehensive and is pretty complex of the number of systems and the behaviors we're tracking and how we bring that all together. And so not all of our clients really are ready for that, right? Sometimes they don't even have all the capability to be able to motivate that we do. But there's certainly um, a lot of interest in taking this concept and applying it to them. So we're working with the, uh, the gamification practice within Accenture to kind of package up what we've done and kind of the thinking that went into the design and some of the technical components um, as something that we can uh, help our clients with, help them with. So w one last question for you, and this from uh, Natasha Militza. Natasha, thanks for the question. Great to hear from you. Um, the question is about, um, about the kind of global uh, scope and differences between different levels of employees and geographies. And I think Accenture makes this a particularly interesting case study, and I'd, I'd love to hear kind of from both of you, what are some of the things that you found that kind of surprised you or things that kind of stood out for you about what it takes to engage employees at different levels or in different parts of the world? What are some of the unique findings? Yeah, you know, I, I think first, what's Steve? been interesting is that we do see a pretty good uptake across all areas of our business, which is terrific. But at the same time, I, I know that the younger generation loves this stuff. I was just, I'm actually here in Detroit in the office today present, presenting to some new joiners. So I covered our A3 program for the last five minutes of my presentation and their eyes lit up. They're a younger generation. They thought this is awesome because they saw the correlation to video games and how this can help motivate them. Um, but at the same time, you know, from a geographic perspective, India loves this. You know, they really have caught on big time uh, with this with this type of approach and uh, almost to a fault have, have really latched on and, and are out there collaborating and, and learning about collaboration. And that can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. You know, if they're out there collaborating just for the sake of collaboration, that can have negative con consequences. But I think at the same time, we're helping them learn what's out there that they can tap into and soon they'll realize the intrinsic value that collaboration can bring to them. Yeah, I think, cool. Thomas, anything from, from your side? Yeah, one thing that we saw, and we, we knew this was going to come, right, but people gaming the system, right? It's not a question of if. I think, as you said before, it's, it's what are you going to do about it? And we saw, you know, generally across the board, people are pretty conscientious. But there's a couple of folks who are in there trying to basically game the system and get these cool badges and points. Um, and we knew it was going to happen, and we had some measures in place. So it's been really interesting. There's been so much conversation and dialogue within Accenture about, well, is that necessarily even a bad thing? Because at least people are engaging. At least they're getting, they're starting to use the tools which they weren't doing before. And what are some um, subtle ways we can try and control this without having to redesign the entire program just for, you know, quote, a, a couple bad apples? So that's been a really, really interesting and rich discussion. Um, and a lot of people are engaged in social collaboration around this discussion, which is great. Uh, so th that's one of been one of the interesting findings. It really has, as TJ said, it has awesome. become the conversation, which is very interesting. That's amazing, and and such an exciting. I mean, after you know having done this, you guys for so long, for seven or eight years, before we were even talking about gamification, uh, to get to the point where you're ha having this tangible impact and these results at a global company like Accenture is very exciting. Of course, as always, this 30 minutes just goes right by and you don't even realize and it flies. Folks want to follow uh, Thomas and Steve uh, from Accenture. You can follow uh, Thomas at uh, Thomas Shu ACN uh, on Twitter, T-H-O-M-A-S-H-S-U-A-C-N on Twitter, and uh, Steve Cockenham, which is S-T-E-V-E, 
K-A-U-K-O-E-N-E-N. -E -E uh, Thomas and Steve, thanks for being with me today. So great to have you. Thanks, Gary. And for all of the rest of you who are joining us live and not live, thanks for being here on the Gamification Revolution. Remember to join me uh, live this winter, this fall and winter in San Francisco, Los Angeles, and New York for live gamification workshops. I'm so excited to see you all there. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all here again after Labor Day with another episode of the Gamification Revolution. In the meantime, everyone, great to see you. Keep having fun. Thanks, Gabe. Bye. Bye.